Kaketso Sejani on Cape Talk, your number one news and talk station. The African Christian Democratic Party is proposing a bill to amend the Termination of Pregnancy Act to ensure women receiving an abortion after 12 weeks must first receive an ultrasound and counseling. Sherilyn Dudley is an MP for the ACDP joining us on the line. Uh, Sherilyn, welcome back to the show. Good evening to you. Hi, good evening and good evening to your listeners. We know that abortion is legal in South Africa. You are proposing certain amendments. Um, Firstly, let's go through what you're proposing and why. Well, you know, knowing the deep concern of so many that women in South Africa facing a pregnancy crisis are exceptionally vulnerable, the ACDP is once again, and we have proposed on two other occasions amendments, um, we've submitted proposals to Parliament for a private member's bill to improve the present situation. So this bill, would, it seeks to amend the Act by deleting certain circumstances in which the pregnancy can be terminated. And that, although it doesn't speak to abortion on demand within the first trimester, it seeks to ensure that sufficient mandatory counselling is there to enable a more fully informed choice. Mm. You, you, you're talking about um, deleting certain sections. What, what are those that you, you feel need to be removed? Well, you know, since the Principal Act was passed, modern medical science has made enormous strides, and it's now accepted that the fetus is viable at 20 weeks after gestation, and that congenital deformities can more readily be corrected by surgery before or after the birth, and the fetus making um, of the fetus, and and making vague references to possible risk to the fetus in the third trimester becomes irrelevant. And, um, of course, the serious abnormalities are covered by a provision in the second trimester. So so it's just simply doing away with that which is, is, is vague and, and, and not necessary. Um, the other thing which is very important um, in my understanding is that <sighs> We, we don't really want a society where babies can only live if their parents are rich. And it's, it's the worst kind of discrimination. So um, we want to at least be striving to be a society that is there for women that are facing desperate times by ensuring that they are well informed about options, safe houses, grants, etc., and that no woman should, as it stands at the moment in, in, in the second trimester, um, that, that um, a doctor who doesn't have any idea of what a person's social or economic circumstances are just can decide if a baby lives or dies in terms of its social uh, circumstances. So no woman should feel that her only option is to kill her child and no child deserves to die because its parents are poor. And this is going to start with legislation. So that that is one area um, that just needs to be seriously looked at in terms of what we understand now in this 21st century. To, to go back, Shirley, to what you, you refer to as, as vague and not necessary sections of of the bill, and I don't want to misunderstand sure. what what you are saying. Um, and from from what what I'm hearing is that if these uh, these sections or parts of it that are vague and not necessary, if they're taken away, it sounds at least that um, it would create an environment where, if as parents or as a mother feeling that the child's um, certain physical condition um, leads to her deciding to abort you saying because there has been uh, uh, some sort of developments in terms of what what science can do medicine can do that they they should not then have that right well there's two things here one is there is a clause in the second trimester that speaks to serious abnormalities, mm. and that still stands, so that's not touched. It's in the third trimester when the baby's about to be born, so the person's carried the baby all that time. It, it then says that if there is any possible risk to the fetus, mm. basically you can then... Pour it, burn it with acid and pull it out limb by limb. You know what I mean? No, so why are you being so brutal, Sherilyn? <laughs> no, no, we've got short time. So it's yeah. illogical. It's illogical so that there's a hair lip or it might bend its finger on the way out or blah, blah, blah. So the point is that is actually covered in the second trimester. So there's no point in having a vague clause like... You know, and what is still in the, the third trimester is that if there's any um, harm to the mother 
that is still something that is considered in terms of the termination. So it must so be it, affect, it must be removed in the it, okay. So it must be removed in the first trimester, or rather in the second no. trimester, because it exists in the third trimester. No, it stays. It, the, the first trimester stays exactly okay. as it is. The only thing removed from the second trimester is the fact that babies who don't have rich enough parents don't deserve to live. And the only thing that just goes out of the third trimester is this possible risk to the fetus, um, which has already been covered in terms of serious um, abnormalities in the second trimester. I, I have uh, okay, and and, and I've, I've got a, a a question, but I'm going to postpone it and go to another uh, point that is made in what you're proposing in the bill. The the question of mandatory ultrasound. What what are you saying there? Well, the, the mandatory is that um, counselling very seldom, um, you know, uh, very seldom actually um, is done in a manner that actually gives any kind of information that allows a woman a fully informed choice. And this, um, and, and we're committed in South Africa to informed choice. Mm. Um, so, so basically, the, the ultrasound has a couple of um, purposes. And one is, of course, that you can better determine the the, the, um, the pregnancy time, you know, in terms of whether it's first trimester, second trimester, etc. And secondly, um, it is very standard basic clinical procedure in this 21st century in terms of doctors being able to, to see and know what's going on. Mm. It also gives the mom an opportunity to know what is going on inside of her body because if a woman is fortunate enough to, to fall pregnant a second time and hasn't had that information um, and, and watches what was going on, mm. it can be terribly traumatic to understand what you did previously without weighing up all and, and considering what what you needed to do so it, 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 it's a sense of being blindfolded if you do not have that information there's a sense of being hoodwinked into doing what you may not have chosen to do it it sounds and, and correct me on this uh Sherilyn, it sounds like uh, when it comes to or part of uh, the, the the whole proposal around the mandatory ultrasound that you are hoping as the ACDP that once a mother who is contemplating abortion and there is this ultrasound they'll be able to see the the fetus and in turn uh, because of that connection then decide not to do it. Well, we're saying that if a woman is going to do it, she's going to do it. But if there's one woman out there that would prefer not to do it if she knew all the facts. Hmm. then she would have that opportunity and it's only fair that people actually can make an informed uh, decision rather than a blindfolded one. Sherilyn, you as the ACDP have been, and you are opposed to abortion. Yes, ACDP traditionally, you know, um, is is seriously concerned about a culture um, that doesn't actually protect its most vulnerable. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, yeah. From a traditional point of view, that is so. Obviously, um, but this legislation is really not touching um, the concept of um, abortion on demand in terms of that early, uh, that first trimester. It is simply saying, let's make this better, and let's make it better for the mother mm. who, who really um, deserves um, all of the help you can get when you're actually in that kind of turmoil of facing something that in, at that time seems so, so difficult. And, and, and sometimes these decisions are made out of desperation. And a lot of times, um, even just very practical things, practical mm. things like, for example, um, shelter, Mm. Um, it could be a, an angry father. It could be that somebody doesn't have a roof over their head. It could be um, where's the next meal coming from. These are things that as a society, very simple to say, we'll just get rid of the problem. The, the thing is that problem, as far as we're concerned, deserves, it, it deserves for us to give its mother the greatest chance mm. to make other decisions if they want to. You it, know, if... if, if yeah, if not, then that's a different story, obviously. A message that uh, an SMS from 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 John in in Woodstock that I'd like to to have you respond to, Sherlyn, and I think this is um, on the back of a comment that you made earlier about uh, uh, providing the the mother with um, options that are yeah. available. And John is asking, so if a poor or young single woman who 
maybe can afford to properly take care of the child and is prevented by the ACDP legislation from having an abortion, will the ACDP um, pay to feed, house, clothe and educate this child? Maybe the ACDP should show people photos of starving, homeless or abandoned children and not only of aborted fetuses. Please ask them this question. Yes, no, and we do. And uh, it, it's just very sad that people feel because some children are poor and, and homeless and starving that we shouldn't be concerned about their situation, but that we should rather just make sure no other children come into the world. So the thing is, is, is there's, there's many worlds used in different ways to look at this. But the, 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 the important thing here is this, is this starts with legislation mm. um, because if, if it's not mandatory to to give this information about where a person can get the assistance to help. And if it's not mandatory to make sure that that person is connected to the help they needed, it's not going to happen. And so what, what we're saying is let's at least try. Let's at least make sure that, that the legislation is in place mm. to make sure that people, if, if there is any chance that anybody would prefer to link with the option then they have every opportunity to link with those options. And let us as a society try to do more to make sure that there is a safety net for people who find themselves in that predicament at that time. And it's not a life sentence. Um, I mean, every woman who gives birth to a child has some change in her social conditions and her economic conditions. I mean, it's just the way it is about having children. But it's not the end of the world, but sometimes it can feel like the end of the world at the time that you're facing this, you know, this huge decision. Pumla sends an SMS saying that it sounds like the ACDP is trying to prevent abortion via the back door. Uh, no, but, but, but you know, any one life saved of a baby whose mother doesn't really want to let go of her child, surely that's only fair for that woman to have had that opportunity to make an informed choice. You know, if you feel like people are only having abortions because you have to hide the truth from them, then surely that's kind of criminal. Mm -hmm. You you know, we need to be open. We need to be transparent. Um, People, if if they're going to make that decision, they're going to make that decision. But if if they're making that decision under duress and lack of understanding of what the options are and and, and what the reality is, then, then we need to make sure we check our motives. Why is it so important we get rid of one more child if there was a chance that that mom maybe wanted a different option? What is the process now? You, you're presenting this bill, and, and one would expect that at some point there will be public comment. What is the process? Yes, yeah, so this is very early stages. So it's been, um, it's been published in the Gazette. So at this point, it's purely in the form of a summary. So people can make comments to me in terms of making this bill, not another bill or another wish list. Like, for example, I mean, many Christians would want to give a big wish, wish list of doing away with everything. It's really to do with making this bill better. So those comments can come via the speaker, and they would come to me as well. And, and I, at this point, could also make certain changes if there was something um, that could actually make it more valuable to us as a society. Um, then, then once it goes to the committee, it's a whole new process starts in terms of the committee um, having hearings, briefings, and um, calling for submissions, and then public hearings. And if put on, that the bill ever got through that committee, it then uh, and, and goes to the national um, legislature and passed through the national legislature. That whole process starts again in the NCOP. So there's so there'll be a couple years now of mm. a lot of conversation, discussion, uh, hearings, briefings, hearings, uh, public input, and and it will be open. And as I say, when it goes also into the NCOP process. It makes sure, again, that it penetrates more widely within the provinces on the ground and so that everybody has an opportunity to have their say, to to consider these things, maybe to stretch our thinking a little on these things and to find each other because we're, we're, we're not a, a, a callous, hardened society, but we sometimes act like we are and we can actually help each other be better. All right, Sherilyn Dudley is an MP for the African Christian Democratic Party.